price action is above that red. As long as price action is above the red and the red's above the yellow, we're considering ourselves to be still in an uptrend. So here we're potentially like, you know, gonna threaten that uptrend because if we start closing below the yellow, it's gonna drag this down here and we're gonna potentially get that cross cross, but we never actually lost it. So we stayed in a confirmed uptrend the whole time. And then like I said, as long as we stayed above it, we're in a confirmed uptrend, but then finally we lost it once we got the cross here and price action is below those moving averages. We're going to continue to drag it down. We attempted here to save that cross to bounce back up and continue the uptrend and just have that be basically like a retrace, uh, but it failed and we sold off. But at no point in time did we ever confirm that we were back in an uptrend. So we knew from this point here at 9600 we're in a downtrend. So at that point in time you should have already been like in, you know, essentially like you know, positioned for the, the downtrend. So you're going to be taking trends predominantly to the downside. So you're looking for shorts. You're trying to get out of long positions. As where when they're in a predominant uptrend, you're obviously looking for longs. And now if we go down here next to the um, TJD uh, um, Jewel Thief right here, we'll see that we did get like our sell signal, the hard sell ass right here, and then again right here. And, um, you know, again, that's why it's important to use multiple indicators. Because you'll see here we got the hard buy right here and then we got the buy again right here. But if you took the hard buy right here, we actually came down below that. So if you had your stop loss positioned poorly or you got an entry at a bad level, that came down and took you out of the trade. And if you didn't re-enter the trade on this one, you never actually got the hard buy. So that's why it's important to use multiple indicators because here you would have got the buy, obviously accumulation zone, but you didn't get the hard buy signal. But then obviously when you see the cross here, you're going to confirm we're in an uptrend and you're going to take that position. And then again, same situation here, why these indicators work so well together. We're in a confirmed uptrend, obviously. You took the buy out of this area. Either way, you're in a massive profit by the time you get up to the 200 moving average. And then you get this sell signal right here. If you take that sell signal at the 200, which actually is where I took my sell signal, um, you know, that's fine. You obviously lock in your profits. That's great. Um, you know, but you would have missed out on the remainder of this move right here and the way you would know You know, obviously that the move was going to continue is once you were back above the red or You stay in that continuation because you never actually cross those over or again If you look down to the TJD TD MACD, you'll see we were in like the blue uptrend the entire time um, So that that's why these indicators work so well together and how they're useful together uh, again It's not financial advice. I'm not your financial advisor. Uh, these markets are extremely volatile uh, you can use these on any um, markets. They are tuned specifically for like Bitcoin and crypto markets. Um, and again, they are all available for free uh, on TradingView as well. So, uh, And then, uh, you know, obviously you can see just with those two moving averages and then like, you know, these indicators, how they all work together. But now, so, so essentially we've determined we're in an uptrend through this area here. So we're looking for the cells to be less reliable. And then obviously like at some point in time, we get that sell up in here. We're already obviously looking for potentially the trend to be ending. And, uh, you know, obviously the TJD parabolic SAR is giving us like the red downtrend as well because we took out like the green pivot point up here. So you have a lot of things basically telling us uh, that the trend is switching over up here at the top. Um, but essentially, if we look down here at the TJD, TD, MACD, uh, you'll see this area is like shaky. There's like you basically like indecision going on but essentially once it starts flipping over and you start getting the uh, green on the histogram you know and you start approaching towards this moving average um, you know you can potentially say like you know looking for entries uh, especially in confluence with the other indicators uh, once the blue slope flips over or actually I'm sorry once the histogram is above it that's another uh, point of entry and then finally once the slope uh, flips over to blue uh, that's your third point and uh, you know you want to be obviously risk on because you're confirmed in an uptrend and then as far as like the downtrend uh, you want to be cautious obviously and look for take profit areas once the histogram flips over I used to I like to use like two histograms um, or uh, you know obviously once price uh, once the histogram crosses down below the moving average slope line it's going to start dragging the slope down and then the third and final one obviously is once the slope flips too negative it's going to turn red and uh, at that point in time you should be obviously like risk out and again you'll see that these things line up together 
you're going to get like your moving average crosses at the same time like that slope is going to flip um, pretty much so you know you can use like some of these indicators more more in confluence with each other and then there's going to be other situations where they're basically just going to tell you like the same thing so it's important that you understand like what you're using and what it's telling you and why you're using it and why it's telling you that um, and then also I do want to explore a little bit more with this because uh, some people don't understand like what exactly is going on with the dots um, basically what's going on is the green and red dots are telling you the trend the overall like trend on that time frame so like here on the daily um, you know they're telling you like once they're red here that we're in a daily downtrend and then the green means like it's been taken out by the price action so we're like flipping over the trend potentially reversing um, and then in this case obviously like it was a fake out and then we sold back off and start like continuing down and then like the purple dots are like a resistance essentially and the blue dots are like support so as we build like that support here on the bottom and we start to like diverge away from it we're taking out like the resistance uh, on the way up here the purple and it's continually like moving up and then we form like this trading zone essentially where the purple becomes like the resistance and the blue becomes like the support and as we move down it kind of like stair steps in that direction and then again it's going to point in like the direction of the overall trend uh, and then we have various moving averages um, on here as well uh, the best way to tell like the predominant trend obviously is uh, your two shorter time frame moving averages but as the moving averages are all like uh, like coiled up in uh, you know random areas like this you know we're not in like a strong trend and like obviously like as they're all like in the correct order which in this case is going to be red yellow green green purple blue blue and then gray white uh, and that's all of them in the correct order it means like we're in the, like a strong move uh, on that time frame um, which in this case obviously we were not strong enough to like get them all in position uh, but essentially what it is it just allows you to use like uh, like the two blues are like the uh, simple and exponential moving average and uh, same with the uh, greens are the uh, exponential and simple moving averages um, and then we have like a bunch of other ones that are just like useful on different time frames um, and that's just based on like what I my personal preferences a lot of people want to like change them over or whatever uh, as they prefer but so as you can see uh, in a predominant uptrend you know certain signals are going to be more reliable as we're in a predominant downtrend uh, you know other signals are going to be more reliable so that's why I was explaining to uh, some people a few days ago about why it's so important for you to trade with the uh, trend like in the direction of the trend and why reversals are like so much more risky and less profitable because like the likelihood that you're going to successfully trade a reversal is much less likely because the trend is overall going to continue like on the way down so even if you do get that reversal it's going to like underperform as where if you just like took the reversal to the downside here like it's much more likely to like be a profitable trade and continue to give you like strong gains so if you took this sell right here you basically had a 15% move to the downside. If you took this buy right here, you had like 3 or 4% move uh, over a much longer time frame um, to the upside. So that's why it's important to, you know, look at the big picture first and determine what you're looking for. And uh, if you are, you know, obviously not financial advice, but, you know, people are always asking, like, how do you tell when the trend is flipping back around or whatever? And you can go to a shorter time frame. Like, for instance, this is the four hour that we're on. And you can just do the exact same thing. Uh, you look at the parabolic star, like here it flipped back over green. So it looks like it's getting ready to move to the upside. Even though we had that sell-off, we came down here, we put in a higher low. Okay, so that's two things telling you potentially we could be like reversing the trend. Now here we're getting the green wicks on the or green histogram, okay? And it's moving to the upside, even though we're still considered in a downtrend with the red. Now here we're getting a hard buy signal on this time frame, and the blue has crossed above the purple. We got the stab down here from the knife ahead of time and, uh, you know, potentially are now moving back up to threaten these moving averages. So the first thing we're looking for on the moving averages is once we can close above the red, that's the first sign. Obviously that can fail, so it can sell back off and close down here. So the second sign is we want to not only close there, but we want to open one and close one above it. So once we open one and close one above it, we may want to potentially, like, add some risk there as we're potentially expecting now move up to like test the yellow moving average and then if we can get above the yellow moving average 
then we potentially, you know, just step it up to each moving average at that point in time or like previous resistance and support. But the idea is essentially is that once we can cross these back over like the red above the yellow, we have potential now to move back up and then potentially like threaten the trend or like reverse the trend back around to like that direction. But again, that's why it's much less likely or much less reliable when you're looking for reversals. You're much better off just like waiting for the predominant trend to like flip over and these moving averages to essentially like confirm. But you need to have like different levels of confirmation. Like you want to have multiple things that trigger you and then you can use like a percentage of your trading account or a percentage of like whatever you're planning on entering into this trade based on whatever those entry like criteria are and you know for everybody it's going to be different and that's what fine-tuning your own like trading plan uh, is based on because it's based on whatever assets you're trading whatever indicators you're using whatever time frames you know how long you're potentially wanting to enter a trade for like you might want to just enter a trade and leave it alone for six months you might want to use that capital like you know every single week and have it like actively moving around so uh, that's why it's important to not only like distinguish your own trading plan but like what time frames you're looking for uh, you know and potentially how long you're ready to just leave like money stuck in a trade rather than take a loss because all those things are important factors and that's why it's so important for you to like determine those things for yourself because nobody else can just tell you all that stuff especially based on just a couple little pieces of information so uh, but there we have it there's our Bitcoin technical analysis for today uh, we could potentially like I said here um, you know, be coming up and, uh, you know, getting a move to the upside and potentially like a retracement on this like bearish, bearish uh, pullback here so far um, or like dump essentially. Uh, but at this point in time, we basically came down. I'm on the four hour right now. We came down and closed like a slightly lower low on the four hour. So even though we're now like getting this bounce here and, you know, we had a higher wick, uh, some people will look at this as like a lower close. So this bounce right here is potentially going to bounce up and then it's going to get like a weaker bounce and then that's going to be confirmation to the market now we can't even get above the the short time frame moving average we're just going to continue selling back off uh, and then at some point in time you know this may potentially cross back over we may get like a few more red histogram wicks and then uh, you know potentially develop some kind of divergence at which point in time we can take like you know more of a uh, you know reversal or a trending potential entry uh, but we are still looking out for our head and shoulders or inverted head and shoulders. Um, I don't like to go after those things a lot of times after I see like everyone uh, looking at the same thing because the likelihood of it playing out uh, if everybody's on the same side of a trade is slim to none because, uh, you know, in all reality, uh, you know, somebody's got to lose. So uh, if everybody's looking at the same thing and uh, it looks like you are standing on the same side of a trade as everyone else, the likelihood is, is that... Uh, the smart person is standing on the other side of the trade and you're about to get wrecked because you are in fact um, you know one of the masses and that's the worst place to be so that's why when I see all of a sudden uh, everybody else talking about these head and shoulders or inverted head and shoulders or specific trend lines uh, that's when I start realizing uh, it's just about that time for those things to start failing or stop working because now everybody's uh, you know found them uh, you know stolen them and is now like relying on them because they've been so uh, consistent in the past. And another thing too, before I get out of here, is it's important that when you're looking for a trend or a pattern, that you're looking for it to happen consistently and identify that exact situation multiple times. Uh, you know, really two times isn't even enough. You need like three. So you need like three touch points uh, for a trend. You need to have like three of an instance for like a pattern. Um, so you can't really use stuff like the happening or, you know, like two points to say like now you have like a trend or a line or a resistance or support or whatever. Um, you need to learn the rules and follow the rules or else, uh, you know, they essentially don't matter uh, if you're just getting lucky basically. So there we have it, Crypto Trend Trader, and I'm out of here.